Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and if you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you're new here, this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week. And if I've done any other crafting, I'll add that in as well. Uh, so I'm a high school maths teacher and I live in Sydney, Australia. And it is the last day of term here. Um, so it's the Friday the 30th of June 2023, which is very exciting for me. I work part time, it's Friday morning now, and I'm due at work in a couple of hours. So I was hoping I might be able to get in a video because uh, I, I didn't get a chance to do one yesterday when I normally record. Right, so I'm gonna jump into my finished objects. Um, I'm wearing uh, my only finished object for the week and that's the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. Now it's kind of not technically finished because it's um, it's got it hasn't got the wet ends woven uh, woven hasn't got the ends woven in yet and I also haven't blocked it yet but I will um, I'll you know the knitting is done um, and so it's almost finished so and there are quite a few ends to weave in. Um, well, actually not that many, but you know, enough. And I haven't done that yet. So this is, like I said, the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. It's knit with Sundara Aaron Silky Merino um, in the color somewhere out there. And the other colorway is, um, actually I'll just grab the balls. Oh, so that's the two yarns held together. That's the Sundara Aran Silky Merino, and this is the Knit Picks Aloft in the Colourway Labyrinth. So those two held together created quite a mild sort of effect in the jumper, but I think it's it's quite pretty. Um, I think it's actually even prettier in person. The Sundara Aran Silky Merino is 50% silk and 50% wool, it's merino wool, so it's you know it's got a bit of a, a sheen to it, this kind of silk. So I'll stand up. It's pretty cropped. So if I was, it, it's actually for my daughter Mia. Um, and so she'll probably wear it with higher waisted jeans because that's probably just a little bit too short. These jeans are a bit too low waisted for this sweater. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Uh, it hasn't, I blocked it at about this point. So it's got a bit of a bubble here and so I can, I need to block it again. Um, so I blocked it when it was on the body. I haven't blocked the sleeves at all. The body is 35 inches chest and um, 12 inches long and the sleeves are 17 inches. So on me, it's got three inches of positive ease, but me is, it should have about no ease on me. She's, her bust is about 35, maybe 36 inches, so it might be one inch of negative ease, but she likes things quite fitted. So the only thing I would say is in the pattern, um, so it's a tubular cast on and bind off, and in the pattern, you sort of have to knit to a certain length measuring from, I can't remember where you measured from, but if you hadn't got there after you'd finished all the raglan increases, so it's top down, um, then you had to knit until you'd knit a certain length. And so I knit an extra inch after the increases, but it, um, I, I do plan to make this again for myself and I probably wouldn't do that. Although in saying that, I don't mind a slightly longer yoke as long as there's positive ease. So if there's, if it's completely fitted, the longer yoke kind of makes you feel like your arms are pinned to your, you know, you can't move. On me, it's all right. I think it's actually a little bit, the long yoke is a little bit problematic for Mia, um, but she seems fine with it. But you know, like you're a little bit, I don't know, a bit picky. So maybe I'm being a bit picky. I'm being, being a bit like, like I want, if, if I'm making it myself, I would like to feel like the fit is perfect because I have that ability to do that because I'm making it myself. So yes, if I was doing it again for Mia and making this size, I would make the yoke a little bit shorter and maybe even make it, um, I don't know, look, we'll see how she likes it, right? So me saying I would do this differently, it all depends on her. If she's like, mum, I love it as it is. But if you were to make another one, then maybe make it a bit shorter in the, you know, here. And I have a feeling she would probably prefer that, but I'll, when she's tried it on, she said, oh, it's a little bit, you know, long here. So we'll see, I'll block it and um, this, the sleeves might stretch out. They're totally fine on me. I don't think there's any ease there and her arms aren't that big, so it'll probably be fine, but we'll see. I'll block it and I'll get a picture of her in it for next week. Um, so yeah, and I'll weave in all the ends obviously. So I will show it again next week, just with all of that done. Right, so I think that's I think that's it for the Felix pullover. Um, my next, um, I don't have another finished object, but I have, I guess what people call a half finished object. 
Um, so these are the Skimmer Socks by Sheila Toy Stromberg. How cute is this sock? Oh, it's so gorgeous. So this is um, Circus Tonic Handmade Firework Sparkle Sock in the colorway Turquoise Parrot. And I knit the, the main part of the sock on a 2.25 millimeter and the ribbing on a two millimeter needle, which is what the pattern suggests. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, I might take a photo um, of it in a foot, in a foot, in a foot, and maybe even in a shoe. I don't know, we'll see, and I'll put it up here. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got obviously a second sock to do. So I knit this sock and I started knitting the second one. And then I was looking for the, well actually there were two, two things. I put my notes on Ravelry because whenever I don't knit two at a time, so I'm usually really particular about writing down how many rows when I start doing something different. So I wrote down, oh yes, I, you know, Judy's Magic cast on, and then I did so many increases, you know, cast on 24 stitches, increased to 64. And then I wrote in my notes that I knit 34 inches, 34 inches, 34 rows before taking, after the last increase, before putting these stitches you put these stitches on hold and then you knit your way down the bottom and I'm just knitting on the second sock going 34 rows that seems really really long and it wasn't 34 and so I was looking for this sock and then I'm like where did I put it and I'm I can't find anywhere and I spent about half an hour tidying up like yeah I hate looking I hate really don't like looking for stuff and spending time trying to find something because it just feels like wasted energy. So I thought, well, I'll tidy up. So at least I'm getting something done and hopefully I'll find it when I tidy up. Well, half an hour later, still hadn't found it. So I felt like I couldn't work on this one. Number one, because I didn't actually trust that I'd done 34 rows after the last increase. And also, like, I don't have much. This is, this is all I have, right? Now this sock weighs 17 grams. So I have plenty with this. This is 42, total 42 grams, but I don't have plenty to make two more. And I was bummed. I was like, where's that sock? I mean, it's not heaps of knitting, but I was like, where did I put it? So anyway, I just thought I can't even, I just need to put this aside, just forget about it. Like it doesn't even exist. Pretend it doesn't exist. I probably should have hibernated the thing on Ravelry so I didn't keep looking at it. Um, and then I went somewhere and I grabbed a jacket. Um, I went to baseball and I grabbed a jacket. And, no, that's where I left it there. I grabbed a jacket to go somewhere and I put my hand in the pocket and there was the sock. I actually had taken it to baseball and was knitting on it at baseball. And I was, anyway, I just put the sock in my, what was I doing? Why would I put the sock in my pocket? Especially a jacket pocket, right? A jacket that I've worn once in like six months, although it is very cold here now. Anyway, I found it, so um, I was very relieved. And then I could confirm, like just by adding up the, the rows, so I, I could see this was my last increase here, and then I added how many rows, and it was 16, not 34. Not even 14, like not even a typo. So I don't know what happened there. I'm usually pretty good about things like that, but I don't know where, I don't know. Maybe it was late at night when I was writing it down. So I, I had gone a bit too far on this. I'd made, done about 21 in rows, so I had to rip back five rows. Not a big deal. So I've got the um, this, this part of the sock on stitch holder. Not on stitch holder, I've just got it on part of the needle, right? Like it says put it on a stitch holder or something, but because it's a long circular, um, I'm just knitting down and that's just parked on the cable really so I didn't I don't have to put it on anything and and that worked totally fine with this one so um, one of the things that I noticed about this was so I did the ribbing and then I thought oh bind off I'll bind off with a 2.25 millimeter needle because I don't want my bind off to be too tight even though the pattern had said I bind off slightly tighter than usual because this is not your average sock this is not your, around your calf. This is actually going, um, do I have the pattern uh, somewhere? Um, I'll put a picture of it. Um, this is actually sort of going around your foot and you actually want it pretty snug. So I know like that's actually too loose, which that would be fine for a calf, but for that part of your foot, um, yeah, so I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to rip this back and redo the bind off, but before I do that, I'm going to finish this one and do the bind off on a two mil needle pretty tightly and see how that works. 
And if that works, then that's what I'll do on this one. If I need to go down, maybe even to a one point, I don't even own a 1.75. Anyway, I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there. I'll try and sort of maybe knit kind of tightly on a two mil to start with. Oh, I think I do own a 1.75. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there. Maybe the two will work. So anyway, really happy with that. Um, and I hope it stays on. So that's kind of the real test. This is a sock that you wear in a shoe that's, you know, like a no-show sock. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if it works or not. Right, so I'm very glad that I haven't woven in the ends, though, because I'll probably need to redo... Oh, I know I need to redo the bind-off. I'm pretty sure about that. Right, so that's the skimmer socks. That's my first whip. Um, my second whip is the sorrel, which I'm a little, uh, I don't know if sad's the right word, because I'm happy with part of it, um, but the only thing, okay, so I've finished the body, but I'm probably gonna rip it out because, and I actually even started the sleeve, so everything's getting a little bit messy here. Um, I'm just gonna take this off and I'll try it on. Um, Right, so let me see. So this is the so uh, pattern Sorrel by Wool and Pine, and I'm knitting it in Rowan Kid Silk Haze is the mohair in the colorway Nectar. And I've used a range of different leftovers um, from my so faded pullover and dotted rays, and um, I've, I'll link to my project in the, you know, in the body of this YouTube thing, and in that, I'll have a link to my project page on Ravelry where, where I've hopefully got all of the yarn that I'm using. Right, so I love this upper part. I'm reasonably happy with this bit and then I'm really, un, like I'm okay with this and then I'm really not happy with this. It's just muddy. Like I feel like it's gone really lovely and delicate and then like I've just walked into a swamp and walked up to here and then walked out again and sort of hosed myself off but like it's just, it's pulling, it looks dirty. It's like the worst of these two yarns. So this is the yarn that has switched to this. And it's a lovely yarn, look at that, it's gorgeous. Like why would I have thought that that would be a problem? But the reality is there's actually a lot of brown, there's a lot of brown in it, which is the swamp stuff. So that's my bad for not swatching. I should have swatched. I shouldn't have just looked at it and went, yeah, that looks good. Um, I should have swatched. So when I was at my local yarn store, <clears throat> so this is kind of in purchases, but I'm gonna mention it now because I'm swatching too. I will undo this. I'm hoping to do it when um, someone's at home with me, like I might ask my son for a favor. Um, <clears throat> you know, which is fair. Like I drive him all over the place. So like, you know, not that, relationships are tip for tat, but it's relationships should be give and take. Anyway, apart from that, um, I will ask him to help me when I undo this because I'll be, it's two strands held together. So trying to undo it and wind at the same time, it will be a lot easier if he has a ball and I have a ball and we both sort of, you know, rip and wind at the same time, untangle if we need to. Right, so when I was at my local yarn store, I got this yarn. This is actually slightly candy pinkier than I was expecting. This is Barbara, this is Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Barbara Deserved Better. That looks pretty true to what it is. It's a little bit Barbie pink, but, but with the mohair, so I did, I did swatch. Right, I'm not gonna start again and do all of this and not be happy with it. Right, that's, I made that mistake once, that's enough. So I haven't done a big swatch, but I hope you can see that looks at, like it's got some of these black flecks in it, but it doesn't, ha they're few and far between and it doesn't have the amount of brown flecks that this has. So these are the two together. See this one looks, it just looks fine. It looks fine, it wasn't. Anyway, um, but this one, yeah, it's just cl cleaner maybe, clearer. And I can tell that in the, I might, oh, sorry about the clinking. Uh, I might knit a few more rows. Um, like it could potentially pull, because obviously I wouldn't get any pulling, any awareness of any pulling in this, but at least it's still, and it's got some of these pretty flecks of orange. So the one thing I did um, confirm was that this will be really nice for the, the ribbing. Um, that's some more leftovers of my so faded because, 
Um, if you look at this bottom bit here, that's really lovely. Like that's really pretty. I really like that. So this is fine. This up, to, uh, I'm starting to get a little less happy, but I can live with this. But this I can't. So and and I know I will love this. So I've got to rip up to about here. So that will be that will be a bit of a, a job. Um, but I'm fine. Like I want this. This is so lovely, and I really want this to be. I want to be happy with it, right? I don't want to look at it every, and every time I put it on and go, Ugh, swamp. Right, anyway, anyway enough on that. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, other things about it. 3.5 mil needle for the ribbing, four mil for the body, which is one needle size up for each from the pattern. And I took out, because my row gauge was a little bit longer and on my previous two, the yoke was a bit long, I just took out one of these um, little panels. It's like six row repeat, just took out one. And I also took out just a couple of rows of plain knitting here. Yeah, so I'm really, I'm excited about this actually. I know like I'm, I'm kind of over being bummed and I'm just excited because I have found a replacement yarn and I'm really happy about that. Right, so that's Sorrel. Um, let me see, should I be taking that off? It's cold. Yeah, but I've got, it's connected to too many things. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, doesn't matter. Um, if I get cold, I'll put something on. I've got plenty of jumpers around here. Uh, next is Muscle Bra by Solar Teague. Where is it? Um, I've always got one of these on the needles. Um, this is in Skein Sisters Fabulous Sock in the colorway As You Wish. And um, yeah, I'm really liking that. So uh, 3.25 millimeter needle and 136 stitches. And yeah, it's a really nice pink with these little flecks of chartreuse. Uh, and another kind of green so yeah happy with that and how that's coming um, and yeah like I'm not in any rush to um, finish that I'll just keep working on it oh but that when I unravel this yarn um, Beck made a hat this is the yarn that my yarn store gave away so it's hedgehog fibers skinny singles and they had a colorway that was they had a few colors actually that were like died for them and they just gave it away to their newsletter subscribers about a year ago it was so generous because i think they had like covid had been good to them um although i think things are a bit tight now but generally like us inflation and everything and meetings a bit of a just for a lot of people a bit of a discretionary spend um but at the time they um it was really lovely of them they gave a whole scan of this away and um beck got this same color and she did a that, I think that might have even been her first muscle bra hat. And so I think I'll do, I'll do a muscle bra. Although we'll have, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have matching hats. We we'll won't necessarily wear them at the same time, but oh, maybe we will. Um, yeah, I think that will be really pretty. I, I, I haven't swatched it by itself, but I don't need to because I've seen Beck's hat and it's gorgeous. So um, yeah, so anyway, that's what that's gonna be. And that's my third whip. So what have I got? The socks, the sorrel and the muscle bra. My next whip is these um, mitts for Mia. I have made a bit of progress on them. Um, oh, black yarn. Right, so I'm pretty sure this is um, Mayak lace. This, that's all, you know when the balls sort of all start to come undone, I need to sort of retie that a little bit. So this is the Mayak, I'm pretty sure that's the Mayak lace, baby yak or something, baby yak lace. And this is, Ro, uh, yes, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colorway Wicked and I'm making some fingerless mitts for Mia because um, she wears them and it's really cold here at the moment. So I've just, I'm just at the point where I've, so I did a twisted rib and it kind of, yeah, you can kind of see it and then just stock in it and then I've just started the gusset increases. So now that it's school holidays, I, I'll, um, and I'll have a bit of time during the day, I'll be able to get them um, done, hopefully not, hopefully before I go away um, in a week or so. All right, so that's, Number four, number five, I can count, I'm a maths teacher. Um, Ranunculus by Midori Hiroshi. Um, I have made um, this in two, I've uh, made two versions before. I've made one in Julie, Aslan, Anatolia. So that was two skeins, sorry, two strands held together of Julie, Aslan, Anatolia and the colorway Clementine, that was the last one I did. This one is just um, Barocco Remix in the colorway Eggplant, and um, I'm hold holding that single, and that's on a six mil needle. 
Uh, I haven't made any progress on this, so if you've already seen it, it won't look any different. Um, and I am still up to the elongated stitches, but I will make a bit of progress on, uh, I don't know if I will, because I want to do that sorrel. So this might still sit um, while I work on sorrel. So I'm not sure that I'll get any more progress on this. So it's kind of um, not an active whip anyway, but it's on the needles and I'm not ripping it out. I do want it. So it's not an unfinished object that's hiding away in a corner. Um, it, it's just on the needles and I'll get to it when I get to it. Right. Next, so uh, am I up to six now? I have got a lot, haven't I? One, two, three, four, no, that was five. Uh, cumulus tea. So, um, last week I did the eye cord um, and I hadn't quite finished, but I, I finished that edging and I just did a couple of rows last night um, and then I just put it back on, um, on two needles to try on. It's still pretty oversized, like it's still quite large, but now that I've worked out that the neckline is manageable, I do have to tidy up just a little bit with my, um, I didn't do too badly picking up the stitches, but I would just like to tidy the, um, those ones at the corner, just with a little bit of yarn, um, pulling that a little bit. So, oh, oh sorry. Um, trying on, on the needles without barber cords or anything is, is pretty easy, but, it does involve a little bit of, you know, like making sure the needles don't poke you. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, I do need to go back and have a look at the pattern. It would probably be fine to knit down and it would just be quite loose and oversized, but it is a lot of positive ease. At the moment, it's, it's measuring 40 inches in the bust, which is eight inches of positive ease for me, and that's quite a lot. So I'm going to take another look at the pattern and work out when did I split off for the sleeves and how many rows was it after, and like were there increases? Because I don't want to rip past this because I've just done the eye cord. I mean, I suppose I could, but I was thinking maybe, at least I know the eye cord works. So if I have to rip back the eye cord neckline, I could. But I want to sort of see if like I finished here and then maybe I did two increases afterwards, two or three increases, I could rip up here and just take out the last couple of increases and maybe cast on a few less stitches under the arms. So there is um, there is stuff I could do to downsize this without ripping everything out. So, but I just need to take a look at the pattern and work out like when did, how many increases passed um, joining together. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. Anyway, so that's my, I need to have a little read of the pattern before I do any, and I won't put any more work into this until I've figured that out. So, but yeah, I've got time now because this is my last last day of term. Um, okay, so that was the cumulus tea. That was number six, and number seven. I actually don't think I can count as number seven because I actually because I haven't um, really started it. It's I think I have to move it to plans. So I'm moving exploration off whips onto plans because I haven't restarted it. Right. So I think that's it for my. Um, my whips, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. Like it's still a lot. Like I think my focus um, will be the As You Wish is my take with me, like in my handbag and also maybe the socks because I'm just knitting on the foot part of the socks. So those are my two. And I can do me as mitts as long as it's daylight. So they're kind of my three active things. And then sorrel will be my big jumper that I'm like sweat out that I'm going to work on actively once I've got that. Um, and I'll probably try and get that um, get that fixed up this afternoon. It'd be nice. Like I'd like to get that ready, all wound up, and have that done and ready to go. Um, so I'm going to move into faux from the vault. So I'm just going to get changed and um, put my faux from the vault on. Right. This is my still light tunic by Vera Valamaki. And this dress, it's a dress, I'll stand up and show you, is, um, it's 12 years old. Uh, I knit it, this is, I've made four of them. This is my first one. And it's got long sleeves, it's got these great pockets that are sewn in. Um, it's uh, raglan, raglan, um, it has a, a button, if it's still done up, has a little button at the back. Um, yeah, and I love this. And I actually think if I had to choose a favorite thing I've made, it's this. Um, I just, I've worn it so much. It's holding up so well. So this is the Garn Studio Drops Alpaca in the color 
uh, 501 Grey. I made a second one in this yarn, that was my most recent one. It used eight and a half balls, uh, 50 gram balls. And it's 100% alpaca, but it's not too warm. Like it's just perfect. It's not itchy, it's so nice, I love it. Um, the other versions that I made, and I'll put pictures of myself wearing them because it was too much changing. Um, I'm due at work in about an hour and a quarter, so. Um, but I really wanted to get this um, this up because I've got a pretty busy day ahead as well. So, um, yeah, I won't get it up till later this afternoon, but I wanted to get it recorded. Um, so it's such a beautiful day. Um, I do work part time, so that's that's why it's like it's about nine thirty here, and I haven't I'm not due at work till about recess. Right, so anyway, back to um, back to this. I've made three other versions. I've made one in Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Malachite, and that used about four, just under four skeins. Um, and that was a really good choice for the pattern as well. I was really happy with that yarn. It's very bright. It's quite a bright green. Um, this is a bit more subtle. Uh, the other one, another one that I made was in Volmai's Lace Garn in the colorway Petite Poison. And um, I made the same size and I and that's definitely a lighter yarn and it also doesn't have the halo like the this is alpaca volmai's a lace garn is um just 100 percent wool and it's it's very smooth kind of yarn it doesn't have any of this fluffiness like even tosh merino light um like here's a ball of tosh merino light that's in posy it's because it's single ply it's got this kind of fluffiness a little bit to it whereas the lace garn is very smooth it's lighter like it's not a it's a heavy lace but it's still lighter um, a lighter yarn than this and so along the raglan increase like it's a tiny bit small along the raglan increase it's a dark color you can kind of see sort of like you can see my skin through it so I'm not a huge I'm not I mean it's still really nice and I still wear it but I don't wear it nearly as much as this one um, but yeah it's a it's a nice one it used almost all of the one 300 it was a uh, they're 300, 300 gram skeins, but they're usually a little bit heavy. So it was a 314 gram skein and I had 31 grams left out of that one. And then the other one that I made was a Garn Studio Drops Alpaca again, but in a beige, 2020 beige color. And I'll put a picture of that up there. So, but this one I wear the most. I think it's the just the color. It's a good color on me. It's fairly neutral. Um, it doesn't, whereas like when I wear the green one, it's like, oh, the green dress. <laughs> like it's really green. Malachite's a very bright color. I don't know that I have a little a little ball of it handy, but um, yeah, I'll put a picture of it up there. So yes, but I just, I just love this pattern. So if you're thinking of like, if you, I mean, it's a lot of knitting, but um, it's mostly stock and air. Like once you've finished here, there's like, sort of nothing and then you do these increases here to create the pockets and then I think I'm pretty sure it's like a three needle bind off or something for the pockets um yeah it's great it's so warm like I'm so happy to be wearing this today so I'm off to work after this so that's why I thought this would be a good one to wear and I wear this to work and I just wear it with um I just wear it with boots like I don't know if you can see I've got like um knee-high black boots on and um yeah it's great Yes, makes me happy uh, and I like being warm. Right, so um, that's it for my faux from the vault. What's next is plans and purchases. So I do plan to make the, um, I will make the exploration station and I've shown it before, but if you're new here, you may not have seen it. Um, I've cast on and started and then ripped it out. Um, this is what it looked like. Oh, sorry, reaching. This is what it looked like before and I wasn't happy with this blue skein classy yarn it was a bit too thin for navy and i didn't like this color well water just sort of took away it was just a bit too i mean sometimes that can be really good but it just anyway it wasn't doing it for me so i'm pretty sure i'm going to go with these four um neon peach graphite antler and then this is the iffy one um the antique lace i did at my local yarn store i tried to find something that was a bit more um uh a bit closer to the reindeer that Stephen used because this is very close to the El Greco that he used. He used these two colours, Neon Peach and Antler, and this one was reindeer for his, which had a bit more peach to it. Um, and it sort of complemented but didn't take away from the Neon Peach. Um, anyway, so I'll, uh, I haven't started it yet. 
um, and I don't know if they've got any more coming in anytime soon. So anyway, I'm still thinking about that one. I will start it and I'll try that one and I'll see how it goes. But yeah, that, that is a plan and I would like to do it, but I'm not in a rush as you can tell, I've got lots of whips. So anyway, I am still thinking about it. Um, I am also still thinking about the, um, what was it called? The I went to look up the pattern on my phone and was looking for my phone and forgot I'm recording on my phone. Anyway, the mini mock tea. So I would like to make that and I'm thinking of using this um, uh, Madeleine Tosh 80-10-10 fingering in the colorway Bloomsbury. I've got one and a half skeins of that. So a lot of people have used it if they're like, if you haven't made it too long out of one skein. I definitely don't want it as short as the, in the on the model. I'd like it to cover my waist. Um, but anyway, I was thinking about it because there's a bit of fiddling to start with, it's top down. Um, but then once you get past the sleeves, it's kind of like a muscle bra hat, right? Like it's just round and round and round. So that could actually be, once you got past the early bits and finished off under the arms, that could kind of be almost like a muscle bra for me. So yes, I'm thinking um, I might actually start that sooner rather than later. Um, so I don't know if you could hear that. That's There's like a firing range around here and it, Occasionally we get these big bangs, um, which usually scares our dog a lot, um, but he seems okay at the moment. And so that's kind of it for knitting plans because I just, I, I have a lot as, you know, I have a lot on the needles. The Exploration Station and the Mini Mock Tea are the only other new cast-ons that I might do. Um, but obviously I'm, I've got three weeks holidays coming up, so I do have a bit of time. The other plans that I have are some sewing plans. So, because my husband returned back from overseas and he brought my packages with me, I'm going to make, they're both orange, this is very orange, very orange. Um, the Town Bag and the Field Bag by Grain Line Studio. And I've got the, um, I've got the, you can't see, I'll put a picture of them up here, but I've got the notions for the Field Bag and the Town Bag. Um, I was kind of underwhelmed when I got it. I was like, is there something else? You know how normally when you get some packages, I don't know, there'd be a picture of it or something or, but anyway, like I guess it's good not to waste ink and toner and stuff. I know what it is, I know what I bought. Um, right, so I'm going to make that. The other thing I want to make, which is sewing related, is the Imbi top. Um, so I saw on Jonna from Kim and Jonna, she had made it and I think somebody else, um, maybe it was Lisa, from, um, and so on had both made it and it looked really pretty and really cute it's a one size pattern that fits most it's not super size inclusive but it is free um, and I think it was sort of offered more like the person who offered it I should have looked that up I'll put it down underneath um, that she sells fabric mainly and then just has a couple of free patterns on her website so it's she's not a, a pattern designer I guess and so it's not like um, yeah, it's not sort of what she does, so she doesn't perhaps have the skills to do all the grading and everything. Anyway, so I went to the copy shop and I got that printed. It was only one page, so even though it was free, obviously you have to pay for the printing, and I didn't really want to stick all the bits together. Uh, it's It cost me, I think, maybe $7 Australian, which is about four four fifty US, to get the one page, one A0 page printed, so that's pretty cheap. And because it's one size, like often I trace off my patterns, but I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to cut into to this one because it's only one size. Um, yeah, so I got that and I also got um, printed the um, patterns that I had bought but hadn't had printed before, the Lola top by Fiber Mood and the, uh, what was the other one? The Francis Top by Fiber Mood. I'm sort of keen to make both of those. Um, and I'm hoping this week coming up, I might be able to do at least one of those. I'm not gonna get all of those done, but one. I'll, I'll pick, look through my fabric, pick which one looks right for the fabric that I have um, and get going. Anyway, so that's my, oh no, more purchases. Um, when I was at my yarn store, I bought the yarn, I already showed the Barbara Deserves Better for the sorrel top the, to change out the swamp color. And I also got, they have this colorway Scout and it's just such a pretty pink. It kind of looks like the sorrel, doesn't it? Anyway, I got three skeins of this because they had it in stock and it was just so beautiful. And um, yeah, I just love that. So it will be something, I don't know what, maybe I should have gotten the fourth, they had a fourth there. Maybe I should have gotten the fourth and made another one of these. Mm. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of super light colored dresses. Hmm, thinking if they still have it. 
because I'm going back to teach through on Saturday. Anyway, I bought three. That's my, and I don't have set plans for it yet. Um, I was just thinking a jumper, but I don't know what yet, but fingering weight, there's lots of fingering weight sweaters, patterns that take, you know, generally I know that takes about three skeins. So, and I haven't got any decisions to hold it with mohair or not, because I have no pattern at all in mind, but yes, just thinking. I've been quite inspired by, um, oh, what's her name? Danish Musings? Somebody put me, I can't remember who put me onto her, but she's amazing. Anyway, I just love her videos and I love the knits that she makes. So that kind of looks even like in her color palette as well. So I'll have a look at what she's made. She makes quite dreamy, romantic things. They're very pretty. Okay, so that's it for purchases and plans. Um, the knit along. So we're running a knit along, which is going to run until the 1st of September. Um, the Instagram hashtag, if you want to um, share what you're making. So you just need to make anything that's like a petite knits pattern or a... Um, my favorite things pattern or any other pattern that I've mentioned at all in my podcast ever so which is probably a lot of patterns um, yeah so that's the only thing and if you can just post on Instagram with the hashtag then I can find it then I can also find you and I can follow you and see what you're making as well so um, just had a look this week at what people were making so um, Rebecca has made a Sunday cardigan by P Petite Knit so I'll put a picture up there and she's also making a chalky vest and Adele is making this beautiful dotted rays with lots of these gorgeous colors so I think um, those three projects are really beautiful and thank you for sharing um, yeah and it's nice for me to be able to share what you're making on here as well so it's not just my makes um, right the hidden whips basket this is actually a little interesting um, I'm not pulling anything new out of the basket because I haven't done anything with these socks yet because at the time I thought oh I just have to graft them no big deal but then as I started inspecting a little bit closer, so this is a sock that has had, um, was just left in a basket, sort of hidden away. And here I, I put all of, my, um, all of my projects, all of my yarn, everything in Ziploc bags. Because I just, um, yeah, I just don't want, I don't want things that I've either spent money on or worked hard on to get eaten. Um, anyway, this was just sort of in a basket in a corner and it got attacked. So it does sort of reinforce to me, keep everything in Ziploc bags. So at the time I just thought, oh, I had this hole and I'd ripped it out and I was gonna fix that just by grafting, right? So there's no, there would have been no magic there. It would have just been find the yarn and, you know, kitchener stitch the two together, no big deal. But then I, on closer inspection, found another hole. So there's one there and I found a hole in this one too. Uh, where is it? Yeah, ah, there it is, another one. So, and also the heels are looking quite threadbare, like this yarn is obviously quite thin or maybe it doesn't have any nylon in it or something, but those, they, that heel needs reinforcing or that's gonna blow out a hole pretty quickly too. So I'm not sure that I can be bothered, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of work to make these wearable. Uh, I don't, I never really fully fell in love with the color. I do have a lot of socks, um, probably more than, you know, I have a lot of socks. So they could be, you know, I could use them as boot stuffers, you know, like my boots are always falling down. And um, so I could just, you know, like, um, use it as sort of stuffing like sew up something with some muslin or something and have this inside and have that as the kind of boot stuffers right I don't mean like just chuck them in the bin but do something with the fabric but not something that is actually a wearable item anyway that's where that's at um, so I'm interested to hear what people think do you think that's worth it I don't think that's worth it I haven't even found the yarn yet I'm pretty sure I do have it I've got this um, bowl of all my leftover stripy sock yarn all in one bowl so it's probably in that bowl and those bowls are all in the open so I do have bowls of yarn um, that aren't in Ziploc bags but they're in the open and I'm always rummaging through them so I've never had I've never found any kind of moth activity or anything in the stuff that's like out and about it was just in these this was in a basket in the dark like in you know sort of I mean, it wasn't under a bed but it was like under a table and in a corner and yeah anyway it got attacked 
So yeah, I don't think it's worth it. I think I can do something with it where I just use it as a stuffing with, with like, this is my, um, I've got this, this is on my desk. This is all my like um, off cuts, you know, when you like weave in the ends and then you snip them. Um, that's just sort of sitting on my desk. So um, I sort of figured I'd use that as like, like stuffing for boot, um, you know the things that you put in your, your knee length boots so that they don't fall over? Right, that, I was gonna make something like that. And that obviously could be very quickly sewn up and just, I just wanted to use something to stuff it with, whether leftover fabric or leftover yarn. So I think that might be where that's headed. I just don't know if I can be bothered. That's a lot of fixing. And I know people would said they were interested in a video on it, but like that's not really my skill. Anytime I wanna do like those kinds of holes, I need to go to a video to look at them. Like that's just not something I do regularly. And I have found, I, I must see if I can find the video and I'll put a link down below if I can find it before I post this because I have done that before, that kind of fixing before, um, but I've only ever done it when, um, and I've looked at the video and I've watched very closely and I'm sort of really, really paying attention. So it's not something that I feel like I could do a video on and add anything. Um, but I will, if I can find the person that I've used, I'll add this, their link. Right, so I'm not gonna get another another thing out of that hidden basket at the moment. I will next week, I'm sure. I might be ready for it, but I'm just not ready to pull anything else out just at the moment. I don't wanna add to my, you know, the stuff that's kind of on my plate in front of me. And that's why I think another reason why that's probably going to go into the basket of things to um, not necessarily be a new object. Right, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, any other craft? So nothing this week, but hopefully next week. And yeah, I think that's it for the kind of the regular content on the channel. I always feel like I've forgotten something, but I do have my, my sort of notes in front of me. So I hope that's, that's it. So um, now at this part, if you're new, this part of the segment, I just talk about my week gone and my week coming up. So feel free to stick around and hear what's going on in my life um, if you like. Uh, if not, um, if you've liked the video, if you can like and subscribe and then you'll see the next one that comes out um, in a week. Right, so my week last week. Um, so I picked up, Friday's just normal week, work day. I picked up my husband from the airport on Saturday morning. He came back from America. He'd been there for two and a half weeks visiting his, his parents. Um, so that was really good to see him. And he went, he'd had a good sleep actually. He went straight to baseball. So he and my husband, sorry, my husband, he is my husband. He and my son played baseball together. And yeah, so I went and watched them play baseball. And that's when I found, that's when I was knitting on the sock and shoved the sock in my pocket. Um, yeah, so that was, that's really nice for me. I love watching them play baseball and I get knitting done while I'm there, which is nice. Um, on the weekend, I was pretty busy with work because it's the end of term and my year 12s are doing a trial exam at the start of next term. And so I needed to review someone else's exam and to do that, I had to sit the exam and, you know, like it's, it was a fair bit of work on the weekend. Um, and I continued watching Alone Australia with Zach. We watched one more episode. I think we're down to about five people now. I don't know the, I'm sure it's all finished by now. I watch everything like after it's finished months ago. Um, yeah, but we're enjoying watching that together. It's a good show to watch, to, you know, with family. And then Sunday I taught at the yarn shop. I taught two classes. I taught one, which is like a next steps for beginners and I also taught fixing mistakes. So they were really good classes um, and enjoyed that. Um, and then Monday, oh, Monday was such a long day. I taught from eight to 4.30 and then I had parent teacher from 4.30 to 7.30. So that was, I was like just exhausted at the end of that day. And then Tuesday, I um, had work Tuesday. Wednesday was my day off, um, but I didn't, I decided not to record that day. Um, my daughter, Alex had a, a lot of job interviews and she was getting offers in and she she just needed a bit of my time to sort of spend time looking at the contracts talking with her about them um, which would be the good you know because she was getting offers from childcare centers and um, cafes and all and and she's doing primary education at uni she's 18 um, so yeah we're just like running through kind of what would be a good fit for her and what um, so I spent time supporting her and Zach had a um, Zach had his first proper job interview at KFC um, and so and he got the job so I wanted to go pick him up because it's like a half hour drive away so I went and um, picked him up and brought them home and then Thursday which is yesterday 
and the other day that I often, like I usually record, we have a leaking bathroom and so I had to go to the plumbing shop to pick the stuff because that's that renovation is starting in three weeks time. So I did that, then I went to work, then I went for a run and then, um, and then Zach had a music gala last night. So he sings and his band had like two songs in this music gala, it's, this is at school. And it was so good. Um, I'll put down the notes of the songs that they, in the notes of the songs that they sang, because it was so, I can't put them on here because obviously it would be copyright and whatever issues, but um, the songs are really cool songs. And like um, having teenagers and getting to listen to their music is really cool. Like it keeps you, um, I probably wouldn't have found any of these songs if it wasn't for listening um, in the car with him um, or him singing them. So yeah, it was really great. But that was, um, that was from, we dropped him off at 5.30 and then went and quickly grabbed something to eat. It was in this really cold school hall, so cold. And we ended up, because we sort of got in a bit late because we went and grabbed some dinner. Um, not like, not that late. We, we arrived right as it was starting. And, um, and so we were in a spot which is pretty much by the door, which was open and it was so cold. And we were there until quarter past 10. <laughs> and then it was like a 15 minute walk to the car. We didn't get home till 11. It was great. Like they were really good, but it's, um, you know, you, you, it's a long night. Anyway, so today is my, I feel like I'm a bit playing catch up. Um, and that's why I didn't record yesterday because it was such a busy day. Um, but I did want to get one out because um, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't have to. I don't have to do this, but I like it. I do. And it's important in all the things that I'm doing for other people that I do something that, that I enjoy and that fills me up. And I think a lot of times mums put themselves last and, you know, that's just not right. We need to, you know, take care of ourselves and nourish ourselves. And this is nourishing for me. I love doing this. Right. So anyway, that's week gone. Um, I'm due at school in about, I should be in the classroom teaching in about an hour. So I'll be, I'll just finish this last little bit and I'll obviously edit it later this afternoon. Um, but this week coming up, I'm teaching this afternoon, then we'll have um, my faculties going out for drinks afterwards, just like one or two, because I've got to drive home. I'm not a big fan, because we finish at three, I'm not a big fan of drinking at that time of day. So I might just have a soft drink and um, I might have one. Anyway, um, so that's today, work today, and then Zach's got youth group tonight. That should be the last sort of going out. Oh, actually, I think this is a really nice thing. Me is my elder daughter, she's 20. She'll probably pick him up from youth group, which is kind of nice. So I can just stay in and relax and watch a show with Paul. We're still going on the Americans, um, but we're heading towards the, because he was away for a few weeks. We're heading towards the end of the fifth season now. Um, and then I've got a walk with my friend Amy planned tomorrow. It should be a nice day. And then I'm teaching at the yarn shop next Saturday. That's my last kind of only big schedule. Um, I'm teaching two classes there. Um, knit your first beanie again. That went really well last time. And then finishing techniques. Um, so picking up stitches, mattress stitch, that kind of stuff. So that's on Saturday, not tomorrow, but next Saturday. And then I've, I'm going away. Um, so my recording will, I'll talk about that next week, but my recording will be a little bit off track um, over the net those two weeks because um, I'm going away to Bendigo to the wool show to Melbourne and Bendigo in the second week and the week after that I'm going on a cruise to Morton Island in Queensland so yeah so I have some nice things coming up and things will be a bit iffy then but I'll I'll talk about that next week right so um, thanks for being with me I hope I think this is a bit of another long one but yeah thanks for being here and um, and please feel free to comment on anything, share what you're making in the knit along. That would be really lovely. It's more just about inclusion and sharing. Like, I, you know, even if it doesn't fit in the category, I just want to see what you're making. So, um, yeah. So thanks for being here and I will see you next week. Bye.